Hello, my beautiful little moglet. Oh, whoops. Today we're going through all of my six stars and I'm going to talk a little bit about them. This is something I like to do every now and then. We have uh, recently passed over 30 six star heroes. I think it's like 31 or 32. And I basically want to go through them, kind of just give my thoughts on them. We can actually sort by combat power and I'm actually surprised Shermia is still at the top, but okay, we'll start with Shermia. For the longest while I actually wasn't using Shermia. When I first got her, I was using her a ton. She has really nice uh, single target damage, uh, you know, defense penetrating on, on ult really nice but then i don't know just other heroes did the same things pretty much i still use her in golem and then i stopped using her in golem because she didn't have gear and i didn't feel like giving her gear but i recently gave her gear again um it's okay you know critical hit chance necklace is never that good but hey she still has 240 crit damage which isn't bad yeah really good single target damage dealer don't regret raising her at all uh she also somewhat recently got her exclusive equipment one of my longtime buddies dark side uh said he really likes Shermia's exclusive equipment for that 25% chance to get an extra attack in. It's just a basic attack, but her basic attack is damn strong, and it doesn't actually count as another turn, so she keeps her attack boost that she can give herself. Um, yeah, all in all, Shermia is just a really nice single target damage dealer, and I like her. Lydica, I actually don't use her too much anymore either, again, for Golem, but also I was using her a lot for Hell Labyrinth, where she is really good because of all of her combat readiness manipulation. She's more of a sub DPS, debuffer sort of uh, deal, but for certain things like the aforementioned Hell Labyrinth, she's really, really good. Also, Golem, really nice, especially after her uh, second skill buff, where she can also dispel a buff, and uh, then, you know, she has unhealable for Golem, so yeah, pretty cool. Lulika. Probably one of the best defense breakers ever. She has defense break on basic and ultimate. 85% chance AoE defense break is really nice. And then 50% two turn defense break on basic is really good too. She does actually pretty solid damage, but uh, she is one of the ones that I have totally maxed as far as skills go in her Molagoras. Also can provide a bit of support with defense boosts and barriers. All around super solid hero. Bring her in Labyrinth a lot as well. Obviously don't regret raising her to six star either. Judge Keys is my main arena damage dealer. Also sometimes bring her in as Manic 11, but now that I've raised Zerato, I don't know, might try and just start soloing it with him. But yeah, I've invested a lot into Judge Kisa, you know, uh, for her artifact Draco plate, I put all of those potion vial things into it to get it up to 30. And for her memory imprint, I gave her all the stones from the arena shop. For, keep forgetting what they're called, but uh, yeah. And yeah, she's definitely one of the top cleavers. Two pretty strong AoE skills here. You can chain one after the other. Also, decent chance to defense break on basic. I should probably raise that, actually, because I sometimes do have to resort to basic attack every now and then, and, and I do really like it when the defense break lands. Since I've invested so many other resources into her, I may as well. Obviously, again, don't regret raising her. Vivian is a pretty interesting hero. She can actually deal some decent AoE damage with her second skill, especially if you soul burn it. That gets pretty damn strong. And then, of course, her ult is very supporty. Attack buff, greater attack buff to herself, and immune for everyone. I definitely put her on the fun hero side because she's just really interesting with her attack and immunity buff and then being able to also do damage. It's just really cool. I'm mainly using Vivian for Labyrinth and also sometimes Banshee, but I don't really do Banshee that much still because because it's annoying. And then we got Bologna, another AoE defense breaker. Has tons of AoE as well. I use her a lot for Asmanic. She also has her exclusive equipment where you can actually make her ult go to 100% chance besides it being activated through Windbreak Fan. Uh, just, yeah, tons of AoE. Really like her for various PvE content. Also quite good for Banshee being Earth and AoE. It comes a lot down to RNG, though, if you're going to be able to kill all those minions that the boss spawns. Because if you can't, then some bad things can happen. But overall, very, very nice AoE damage dealer with a lot of defense breaks. Uh, Seaside Bologna, completely regret raising her to 6-star. She's garbage, the worst, most useless hero I've ever seen. Watcher Shuri, on the other hand, is quite nice as well. He's in at least 95% of my PvP matches. Solid single target damage to finish off any that Judge Kisa can't. And, uh, yeah, he holds on to Midnight Bloom, so I can have 16% less crit chance in my entire arena team. I do need to update his gear with better stuff, as you can see. I mean, he, he's not that bad, especially because he fully penetrates their defense. But, um, there has been some times he's let me down, so need to update his gear probably. Hmm, now we got Ravi. I was using her as my frontline a ton for normal Labyrinth. I've, I've been kind of switching around my Labyrinth team a little bit. 
uh, but I'll probably put her back in instead of uh, Dominial because Dominial is uh, much better not on auto. That's pretty much all I've been using her for since I don't do Golem very often, but she's obviously quite nice for Golem too, especially if you're gonna manual because you can burn that S1, do some insane damage. But yeah, overall, solid bruiser that can potentially do some massive single target damage. Lena is not six star yet, so we're skipping her. Bike and I almost don't use it all these days, but she did make for some really interesting arena teams uh, because, you know, she can boost combat readiness with her ult and she is somewhat fast herself so she could potentially be our combat readiness pusher if the rest of your heroes aren't too slow and also paired with someone like auxiliary lots you know he could be having tons of stuff going off all the time have your enemies not be able to attack you at all so my arena team personally is pretty set in stone for now but there are often times when i raise a new hero that i'm like mm, i should throw bike in that arena team because you know auxiliary lots isn't really going to work in this case so yeah even though i'm not really using her right now she's super interesting and uh might come in handy in the future. So now we got Lilius, another super interesting character, mainly because of her ult. Uh, not only being able to push back the enemy's combat readiness, but also taking the attack of the one with the highest attack in your team and applying that to this damage of her ult, which is pretty funny. So uh, I build her with crit damage, crit chance. Well, there is some attack there, but just because like the sword is mo mostly speed and defensive stats. So. She has a really weird build, not focusing on attack at all, but crit chance and crit damage. And that's of course just to do damage, you know. She can also tank really well, she's in my PvP defense team. I can't really see how she is doing there, but I can imagine it's solid. Uh, she can also cleanse defenses with ready load fire, you know, two turn provoke, pretty crazy, and then guaranteed dual attack from a random ally, but still nice. So yeah, I think we're maybe about halfway through now or so. And uh, there hasn't been a single 6 star I regret raising yet. That probably has a lot to do with the fact we're sorting by uh, combat power though. Because obviously the ones I regret raising probably aren't going to have gear on. Uh, so we'll get to those a little bit later. Next we're taking a look at Challenger Dominial. She's actually still in the stuff. I uh, had her in when we were doing the video. 321% crit damage. I was using her for Labyrinth. I haven't really experimented much with, with her since the video though. I want to get around to raising Celeste so I can try her in some PvP comps. But uh... Yeah, that'll still take some time. I have a lot of heroes in backlog still. She might need a little bit more speed, even with Celeste in there, though. Uh, I don't know for sure, but yeah. She doesn't need more than 50 crit chance, which is cool. She doesn't need much speed, considering she gets boosted by every critical. Overall, also a super fun hero. Massive, massive single target damage on that Soulburn S1. Zerato has already been kind of gimped. I mean, for the video, we had Judge Keys' necklace. I should find something else for him. We probably have something. Well, here's an effectiveness set crit damage that no one's actually using, so yeah, we'll take that. Regardless, I just made a video on Champion Zerato soloing Azamanic 11 and Banshee 11. Also, well, we didn't do much PvP, and the ones we did, I don't really know if that was a good enough showcase, but uh, yeah, obviously, super good for those two hunts. Uh, probably even better if you have a support with him, maybe one, so he's still getting debuffed most of the time and can counterattack. I got a comment or two saying I should have more health on him, maybe swap out the speed boots with health boots, and I'll definitely try that as well, because it wasn't super consistent. Uh, but let's keep moving on. Luna, I was actually using pretty often for Hell Labyrinth as well. Uh, I guess I haven't done Hell Labyrinth in a bit, because she's missing a ring. Or maybe I did and she just doesn't need a ring. Who knows? Also for Wyvern, but I'm not doing Wyvern that much anymore. But yeah, again, super awesome single target damage dealer. Uh, nice defense break on ult that can pretty much apply to anyone since it attacks with an advantageous element. She doesn't need a special team to really shine in my opinion. She's just a good single target damage dealer. Kind of like Lorena, I would say, but with defense break. Only needs 70% crit chance because of her passive. Not much to say about Luna, I don't use her super often anymore, but that's just because I don't really do Wyvern that much, or Hell Labyrinth, where I have been using her. Next we got Fallen Cecilia, she is currently on my defense team in PvP, and I also take her on offense sometimes when I'm trying to get my Judge Kisa to kill a Moonlight Kin, because the Kin's counterattack will most definitely kill my Kisa if I don't have protection from Cecilia and her barrier. Also she can really save her team with the skill nullifier on her ult. AoE skill nullifier is pretty nice, and of course that 100% chance provoke, very very cool as well. Have her with Elbris for those counters to provoke. Honestly haven't tried her much at all in PvE. And then we got Dizzy, the PvE Queen, Abyss, easy peasy with her. Also Hell Labyrinth, I was bringing her along, although I did notice on the uh, fire boss, forgot his name, 
Um, obviously, since that'll miss 100% of the time, he'll get that counter attack in. But if the debuffs land, then it's not going to do that much damage anyway. She can also definitely be solid in PvP with the right setup. Like if you have Bazaar that can strip their buffs and also provide some other debuffs, then you can really, really cripple the other team. But you'll need a super fast Bazaar. Uh, that would allow Dizzy to not be as fast though, because it pushes their combat readiness back. But yeah, she doesn't do too much damage, but uh, she is kind of unique in that her basic is AoE too. And if you do build her with a bit more power, you know, you can go through a Tomatin Tower very quickly as well. And then we got Tamarin, my absolute favorite Soul Weaver. Provides so many damn support things. Dispels all buffs on your team while transforming. While transformed, attack buff, increase combat readiness by 50% and healing, and then a guaranteed dual attack from the ally with the highest attack on basic while transformed. While untransformed, she is a little bit underwhelming, which is a bit of AoE healing and a bit of single target healing, but once she's transformed, boy, you better watch out. And then we got Oxlaw. Kin, why are you missing a sword? What? He is on my PvP defense team. You cannot be missing a sword, dude. I did not do that. Why did you throw away your sword? Are you not happy with it? And I was wondering why my kin was doing so bad in real time arena yesterday. <laughs> mm, that's a tough choice. I think I'm gonna have to go with the health one though. He doesn't have that much health. 14.5k now if I do that. But anyway, kin, yeah, he's on my PvP defense team. You know, I don't really see him in action because he's just on my defense team, but when I fight other kins, they are pretty scary since I do attack with Judge Kisa. And if a really well-built kin counter attacks, then it could be that Cecilia and her barrier plus, you know, a plus 30 Draco plate isn't enough to save her from a kin counter. So it's always a bit of risk. And then if they're built more tanky, it could be that her basic attack plus her ult isn't enough to kill him. And he definitely kills her with a second counter then. Also, I sometimes use him on PvP offense as well, in Guild War at least, paired with uh, Seaside Bellona and Moonlight Cecilia, which is nice because I can auto it. You know, because <laughs> uh, we're just counterattacking all the time. Angelica, um, still fully geared, but I don't use her very much anymore. It's just, I have a ton of Soul Weavers now. Dian, Tamarin, I just kind of prefer the ones that can also give an attack buff, but that's not to say she's bad. She's a super good healer. I would definitely say the best four star healer ever. Barrier, immunity, very well rounded, but yeah, I don't use her too much anymore. Says, um,. Yeah, I'm sure he can still be good. I'm sure he can still cleave a really well-built says. I don't use him anymore though. I just prefer Judge Kise. As a farmer, he can be solid too, but I would actually prefer Lina in that case as it's just one attack and says has to kind of do both attacks, which takes longer. Uh, and that's kind of the point of farmers, basic attacks and stuff, but yeah, whatever. It's hard to say that I really regret raising any of these six stars because I did use most of them a lot and they did help me throughout like, you know, early mid game. Probably if there was an option to recall says I might do it. Destina was, I believe, the first five star I ever got from summoning. Says was from the, you know, integrated reroll thing. I had Destina for a long while on my PvP defense team. Eventually swapped it out for Lilius but counter attack set Destinas on defenses. Holy hell are they annoying. I just fought one in Guild War today. Oh my God. Because for some reason on PVP defense, when you're fighting someone with a counter set, it's like 80% chance to counter and not 20%. I don't know why it is, but literally she wouldn't counter like one out of five and she just kept healing constantly. And then finally Watcher Shuri's ultimate skill cooldown was off he did it, she still had HP left, but at least she didn't counter that one time, and then, you know, it could finish it off with Judge Kisa, but still. Wow. Once I do get good counter pieces, I'll probably put her back on my PvP defense, but for now, as you can see, she's even missing a necklace. Um, yeah. Ah, uh, Crozet. He helped me a lot with Wyvern in the beginning. Don't use him anymore because I don't need to, but, um, he'll always hold a special place in my heart. Literally raised him purely for Wyvern, and, um... He did his job there pretty well, and I was able to do it before I had, like, you know, good gear where I don't actually need a tank. Uh, yeah. Not 5 star, not 5 star, not 5 star, not 5 star. Mascot Hazel. I actually used Hazel for a long time. I really, really liked her short cooldowns. I had her with Rod of Amaryllis, and, you know, two turn here, both non-attack skills. She could actually be a solid healer and buffer. You know, with the increased attack, you know, could, could bump that up to three turns with the soul burn on a three turn cooldown once that's Molagorid. And as a natural three star, Molagoring is pretty cheap. 
doesn't cost any actual Molagoras. So very short cooldowns. With Rod of Amarilla, she can actually be a healer too. Build her with a lot of speed. And yeah, she's really good. Shadow Rose is kind of a sad story. I did use her for a while in the beginning, but sadly for what she did, her base speed wasn't good enough, high enough. She has her exclusive equipment now, so she can push a little bit more forward and a little bit more backwards, but 107 speed just isn't really enough. I know Oxlots isn't that fast either, but his is really worth it since you also get an attack buff and it's a 100% increase. So yeah, I'd probably recall her as well if the option became available, which is sad because I think she was my first uh, four star Moonlight Hero, and I was really, really excited to get her and she actually did help me a while in Arena. Also in a lot of PvE with uh, her second skill here, very nice skill, removing a buff and decreasing defense. I think I think some people still use her in some PvE content. Slash and Mercedes, very nice AoE damage dealer. I used her for a while in PvP before I got my Judge Kisa, uh, and unfortunately she doesn't have the right artifact to really shine where she can chain S3 and S2 together, kind of like Judge Kisa. It may have been Lulika's signature artifact, but it slips my mind right now. Basically it just allowed her to get 100% combat readiness from doing her ult, as long as she criticaled on everyone, so then she could do her second skill. So yeah, I didn't see much need to use her once I had Judge Kisa, which can do that also. Spectre Tenebria, she has been stripped. She's really an impressive hero. The main problem with a lot of these stripped heroes is that uh, when I'm making a video for them and trying to show them like their full potential, I'm usually taking gear from other heroes I'm using at the moment, which is probably how uh, Kin's sword got removed at one point. But yeah, I just don't have enough good gear to go around for everyone. So that's just what it is. I totally maxed out her skills and she has no gear. How sad is that? The main use case I saw for her was PVP. And again, my PVP team is kind of set in its way right now. But uh, when I would need single target damage, like, you know, to try and not proc a Moonlight Kin's counter or a Seaside Bellona's counter, then she could definitely come in handy. Can Soul Burn that S1 to just keep it going. And of course, 50% attack and defense when people die five times. That can either be your team or the enemy's team. This area has also been stripped kind of in the same vein as uh, Spectre Tenebria. I just needed gear elsewhere. She has a very nice pair with Tamarin in some things. In a lot of things, so like mostly PvE stuff, I don't think a series is really necessary. Because once you get those first like four or five turns out of the way for Tamarin's skill cooldown, it's pretty much smooth sailing by then because it keeps going down in, in idle transform and you know you don't really need to reset the cooldown at that point. Regardless, her as a character is nice anyway, though, you know. Defense down, single target attack, very nice. Cannot buff comes in handy in some of those Hall of Trials bosses. Obviously, Oathkeeper, the most special thing about her, she fully resets the cooldown, and then more defense break chance on basic. So again, solid hero, nice pair for Tamarin. I just don't see the need for her for what I'm doing. We definitely need more in-game content, <laughs> in my opinion. And then we got Lilibet. I would have to say I regret raising her just because I have not used her since I first raised her and made the video like a long ass time ago. Uh, I'm sure she definitely does have some uses, you know, extinction. I guess it's more of a problem of having Judge Kisa and just being able to increase the cooldowns of the revivers and being able to kill the revivers before they can revive anything. So, so extinction right now isn't really that desirable or interesting for me. That's just what it is. I'm not saying Lola, but is bad and can definitely take care of some of those Arbiter Villagers, perhaps, if you uh, build her really strong. Lorena, she was a big boon, early game, free to get, strong, single target, a bit like Luna, but with no defense down, but instead up to 50% extra attack. <laughs> so, <laughs> has it always been that high? Damn, 50% attack once you uh, hit someone five times? Kind of cool, actually. I, I didn't know Lorena got such a massive attack boost. I haven't looked at her in a while. Jesus. Might, might be better than Luna, actually. 75% attack? Whatever. And then we got Melissa. Uh, you know how I feel about Melissa. Even when I put her in, like, the best gear I had, it still wasn't anything super special, you know? Her single target damage. But, to be fair, I didn't ever give her any Mulgoras. I'm gonna say the same thing I said when I was first reviewing her. It's a shame that you can't curse bosses, if so. She'd be really good, but she can't, so she's just another single target damage dealer, which is kind of underwhelming. In my opinion, I'm sure some people can find good uses for her. And then we got Sid. Haven't used him for an eternity. I'd probably use him again, actually, if I could get his memory imprint a little bit higher. Uh, but I just don't get any duplicate Sids, ever, so can't do that. But, um, yeah, you know, speed imprint is pretty rare. He's very naturally speedy at 122. It's gonna be kind of hard to build him super fast and super strong, so that maybe you can one shot someone and get an extra turn but uh if you can do that cool you know then you can go on and do his basic or whatever main reason i'd be interested in him now at this part of the game would be the speed imprint so i haven't really been doing anything with him for now 
Maybe though, once I get a speed imprint up. And finally we have Soul, which I'm not really going to touch on because I've literally never used him a single time ever anywhere. Uh, I saw him like kill Hell Raid Labyrinth bosses or something with Dizzy, which is cool and everything, but like, uh, I don't know, too much muscle for me, maybe. That could be it. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I would say pretty much none of the heroes I regret six starring because all of them, except maybe Lilibet and uh, Melissa, did help me at some point in the game and I was using them for a while. But if I had the option to recall some of these and get back everything I spent in them, mainly Mulagoras, then yeah, I'd probably do a chunk of them. And a lot of those heroes don't yet have their exclusive equipment, which can definitely push a character from meh to damn. They can be really good here, or there, or wherever. Ah, finally back to the lobby screen. But that's pretty much it. Those are my thoughts on my six stars, how I feel about them currently, what I've been doing in the game and what I was doing before are sometimes changing, although not that much since we don't get new content very often. Make sure to leave your own thoughts in the comments down below though, leaving a like if you have new enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks as always for watching, and until next time.